interesting story. The first time I heard about Fantasy Leagues, I really thought it had something to do with Magic the Gathering or Dungeons and Dragons or Lord of the Rings. Killed the dragon. If, unlike me, you've been aware that these leagues primarily revolve around sports, then you definitely know a good amount about the company Tom Griffiths co-founded. FanDuel is the go-to site for the fantasy sports industry, allowing for a more interactive and all-inclusive gaming format. Sports Business Daily listed Tom as one of their 40 under 40. We're going to get an insider perspective from Tom on all things fantasy and reality. Fantasy. Reality. It's been a while since I've seen you. I know. Last time was in Scotland. In Scotland and we were drinking whiskey. I know. No whiskey today. It, it seems things have gone up from there. Yes. I think <laughs> the Valley Girl show really launched Fanduel and now... <laughs> We've just been on an uptrend since then. And it's really amazing how much you've grown. I think that was in 2011. Yeah. So the company was, must have been about uh, eight or nine people back in 2011. Um, fast forward to 2015, we just tipped over 150 people um, between two locations, uh, oh New York and Edinburgh. Um, another way to measure growth is prizes paid out. So yeah. um, obviously FanDuel's are a, a daily fantasy site for real money. Um, we paid out about $10 million um, in 2011. This year, we're going to pay out over a billion and a half. Uh, what? Prizes. I know, it's a lot of money. High five! Uh, <laughs> For those people who don't play fantasy sports yet because they haven't seen this interview, right. what are fantasy sports? The idea is that you become the general manager of your own team uh, and pick your dream team of athletes that when they score real points in real games, um, you get points in the fantasy game. And so this is huge. 41 million people play in North America. Um, but it's really slow, and so you have to wait till the end of the season to get your prizes. Whereas FanDuel is this new kind of uh, one-day fantasy sports and condenses all of that action into a single day. So you can play and win in a day uh, for real money. And it's much more to the minute. Instant, exactly right. So it appeals to a much younger demographic. Um, the average fantasy player is in their mid-40s. The average FanDuel player is in their late 20s. I think people like the instant gratification and kind of mobile nature of it. Could Brad Pitt be on my team? Uh, <laughs> you could try. I don't know if he's been drafted into any major sports <laughs> leagues recently. Yeah, you can just go to the App Store. You can download the FanDuel app. You can pick your team in five minutes and then enter for a dollar, five dollars, a thousand dollars if you're feeling flush, um, and then win cash that night. Are there any wizards in the fantasy league? There are some amazing pro players. Um, we've definitely had guys quit their jobs in finance um, because they can make more money playing on FanDuel. Um, there are guys winning six figures a year or more um, just as a professional income. Do you know a lot of these guys? We're in touch with them. Um, we have a VIP manager who manages the top guys. We also run a ton of live events um, in Vegas or Miami um, where the kind of creme de la creme of FanDuel rise to the top and play each other. And so we get to meet a lot of the guys in person and uh, get their feedback. How do they do that? They just study it is up. amazing. I, it, yeah, it really is. If you see some of their war rooms, they've got multiple screens and spreadsheet models. Some people that even have um, staffs of people that um, work with them to uh, manage their lineups. How does this compare to gambling? And have you had any regulatory situations? Like, can anyone do this, or do you have to be in a certain state? Or the short answer is that it's different to gambling. Uh, it's a game of skill. Uh, played for real money, which makes it legal in the US. We have done um, statistical analyses to show that it's a game of skill. And really, um, at a federal level, it's carved out of any gaming legislation, specifically because it's fantasy sports. It's really in the leagues and the media companies' interests to um, have fantasy, because it really drives engagement with sports content. So we see once people start playing FanDuel, they consume 40% more sports, whether it's watching, reading, tweeting. Um, and so You're actually supporting the whole industry. Exactly, exactly. And so there's a real trend. That was one of the reasons um, we were able to recently do a partnership with the NBA. They became an investor in FanDuel. Um, they sit on our board. And what they really liked was, whereas fantasy football is huge, fantasy basketball hasn't traditionally been that big. Um, but we're seeing the daily game be much more popular for basketball because um, it's just quicker to play. And they're seeing an increase in uh, content subscriptions uh, due to FanDuel. What is your master plan with FanDuel? What we're realizing is that there's a much bigger mission here to make sports more exciting. Can we think of other ways to drive engagement with sports and become this um, household sports brand? So what is the secret to winning every fantasy competition. So you pick the really good looking players, <laughs> the ones with beards, and they tend to score more points. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're clearly a really fantastic entrepreneur. Um, what is one piece of advice you have for someone just starting out? Always, the number one piece of advice is talk to customers. Um, people want to build something in their bedroom that they think is going to be amazing and take over the world. And usually when that goes out and hits the market, um, there's a cold realization that uh, it isn't quite what people wanted. So ultimately, you want to be building something that people want. And the only way to find out if you're doing that is to be speaking to customers before you even start building anything. So survey, speak to them, interview, um, and always kind of in include them in the loop when you're developing a product. I can't wait to see where you take FanDuel in the next five years because you've taken <laughs> it so far in just these last Thanks. five years. Well, we should go drink some whiskey. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to do the thumbs up thing again. You can do it. No, I love no, thumbs up. Oh, you should totally do it. <laughs> We're too sophisticated. For fun. Okay. I'm like the Valley Girl. And I'm like Tom Griffiths from FanDuel. Double thumbs up! <laughs> <laughs>